This is a video for how to go about constraining all of your sub-assemblies together into one final assembly um, for the T9 Automoblox car and Autodesk Inventor. In previous videos, we've done the rear sub-assembly, the passenger sub-assembly, a wheel sub-assembly, and the front end sub-assembly. We're now going to go about placing these assemblies together. So I'm, I'm going to start a brand new assembly file. Go to File and go to New, English Standard IAM, and say Create. And the first subassembly I'm going to place is my front end subassembly. And I'm going to go to open. And I'm going to left click to place, right click, and say OK. Now I still want my front end. This right here is what I want to call my front that's coming right towards me. I want to right click and go to set current view as and go to front. And I'm going to go to my top right hand corner. I'm going to right click and go to set current view as home and go to fixed distance. Now, when I click on my house button, this is the fixed distance that we said. Had I right clicked and gone to set current view as home and gone to fit to view, when I click on home, it'll really fit it within the screen. So, in order to place our cars together, we need to place in these connector pieces. So, we're going to go to place, and you're going to see T9 connector right here. And we're going to say open. And I want to left click to place, right click, and say OK. And you'll notice that these square cavities are going to fit over the top of these square pegs right here. Now this can be a little bit difficult to do sometimes so we're gonna line up edges again. So we're gonna go to constrain and I want you to zoom in until you see this edge right here. We're gonna constrain that edge to the edge it would snap up against which is right here. And I'm gonna say apply. Now you'll notice it went in backwards on me. If I say apply here you're gonna notice that it went in backwards. So that's obviously not what I want. So I'm gonna come over to the T9 connector. I'm gonna right click on mate and say delete. I want to drag this out. So that, that might happen to you too. You can always come over here and delete constraints you have in your browser bar. I also need to right click on my front end subassembly and go to grounded so this will fit correctly. So let's click on this and go up to free rotate. And I need to move this around so where it's like actually like facing the object a little bit. I'm going to right click and say OK and I'm going to drag in. I'm going to go to constrain. That corner I'm going to constrain to that corner. Now let's see if it went in straight since I turned it around. Yes it did. I'm going to say OK. You're going to notice now I can drag this thing out and it can go along and around. You can probably see how that works. See how it goes along that and around that? My next step would be to find this edge in here up against this edge right in here. So once you've dragged yours out a little bit, use your mouse wheel and your and your view cube to give yourself good views to where you can actually start constraining things. I want to click and go to this corner right down in here. I'm going to flip around and zoom in and we want to go right into this edge right in here and I'm going to say apply. And you're going to notice now when I go back up in my view cube I can't drag this off. You know my wheels aren't spinning over here. So one thing we might want to do is go back into the object and like un unground the object if we can. But it's still allowing me to move things around. So at some point we'll go through and show you how you can actually spin these while we just keep the subassembly where it's at. In order for us to move on, we have to place our passenger subassembly. So I'm going to say open. And I'm going to left click to place, right click, and say OK. And if you remember in the other video, I said that I had kind of put this in backwards a little bit to where our windshield wasn't facing the front. Well, now you can see that this is our cavity that this bar is going to fit into. So this right here is going to come up and fit on top of this object. Now, in order to constrain this, is pretty simple. We're just going to go to constrain, and we can just say this face to this face and say apply. And since we have those faces, you'll note that my front end now drags right along here. What we want to do is we want to flush two surfaces. We're going to look at the bottom. Constrain, flush, this surface to this surface. Apply. Then we want to do the sides of our cars. Flush, this surface to this surface. Apply. And we now have the car constrained at the front end. You might, as you zoom in over here on the side, you'll see a little bit of curvature in here, but that's just with the way the parts are made. That's not because you did anything wrong. Now, sometimes people will zoom in and be like, well, what's, what about this up here? That's just the way the parts are made. Um, you can ignore that part for now. Let's go to place, and we're going to go to rear subassembly. You're going to go to open, and we're going to left click to place, right click, and say OK. I'm going to kind of drag this out here a little bit. We need to place a connector piece, T9 connector, open, left click to place, right click, say OK. 
again, I need to click on this and go up to free rotate. And I'm going to rotate this to where the, the square cavities are facing the actual object. And I'm going to drag this in. I'm going to go to constraint. This line right here to that line right there and say apply. Let's come back to our view. You'll notice that it is still dragging out like this. I need to right click on my passenger section and ground that while we place this. So now you'll notice that it's coming around. I need to come back around to this this object right here to where the to where your uh, square cavities are turned in towards the object again just to make sure it constrains correctly. Let's go to constrain and I want to choose this corner right here to this corner right here and say apply. I'm going to flip this around and you'll see that it's perfectly constrained right now. We can move this out of the way over here on the side and go to back and let's double check and make sure that this is constrained right. I want you to notice one thing we'll do towards the end is that this back right now, I have this a little off. You know what, let's go ahead and do that right now. On the right hand side of your screen, you're gonna see this view toolbar. Down at the bottom, there you have something that says look at. Click on that look at button and click on the back surface of your car. And now your view cube is a little off kilter. Right click on that and go to set current view as, and let's just call that front for now. It's not really going to matter in the grand scheme of things. We're going to change what the front view is at the very end of the video anyway. So now that we have this perfectly lined up, I can kind of drag this around and start constraining it. So the same principle on the back is going to hold true as what you had on the front. Constrain the back surface of your back subassembly to the back surface of the passenger section and say apply. Now we can flush these two top surfaces instead of the bottom. I'm going to go to flush. The tops, flush, apply, flush my sides, flush, flush, apply. Now if I go to my left side view, you might notice this looks a little bit higher up um, than the other ones, but this is how the parts fit together. I can look at my top part up here, and you know, let's just say for instance that that flush is wrong. I can come over here to my rear subassembly and see which one I put a flush on the top. See how this highlights when I go over the top? The flush on the side seems fine. It's that flush on the top that looks a little weird. Let's right click on that flush and go to delete. And let's go to the bottom of the car. And instead, let's try this. Constrain, flush, this surface to that surface. And say apply. And let's look at the side view. Now you note that the top looks like it's, it's up a little bit higher, but we do have it fully constrained. There's nothing we've done wrong as far as constraining is, is concerned. We could go in and change the pieces. Um, that's for another video, but kind of as where we're at now, we've put together the sub-assemblies. You notice that here on the back you have the wheels, you have all of your objects put together. Now one thing you can do within an assembly is you could actually, I could actually get out of this altogether, you know, and take away my wheel sub-assemblies on the front. So for the sake of just discussion and how we go about doing this, I'm going to double click on my front end passenger section and I want to tap on these wheel sub-assemblies and I'm going to delete them. Wheel sub-assembly, delete, delete go to save, go to OK, and I want to go back to my assembly, my larger assembly, and you'll notice that they're gone. Let's go to place, and I want to go to T9 wheel subassembly, go to open, and I'm going to left click and left click, right click and say OK. I'm going to go to constrain, and I'm going to insert these within our larger overall assembly. So when I click here, I'm going to come back around and place that onto the side where the circle shows up, say apply. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. I'm going to grab hold of my other wheel over here. Free rotate, just like you're putting anything on a car, just like normal, except for we're going to use the insert command here. I'm going to go to insert, click on my edge, where the two circles would hit. That's what you have to look at. The two circles are hitting. I'm going to zoom in. See that circle? Say apply. Click on my house button. Now look, I'm going to rotate this, and you notice earlier that when I was rotating, it was kind of taking the whole thing with this. Now these are separate now. We would put the whole entire car together and place them that way. Our back end, if I double click on the back end, you'll note that I have, look at all the wheels and tires and axles that I have over here. Let's delete those. I'm just going to tap on my axle and hold down on the control key. And I'm going to get tap on each wheel and each tire that I have going here. Axles, wheels, and tires. And I'm going to hit delete. And I'm going to say save. And I'm going to say OK. I'm going to go back to my larger assembly. And I'm going to go back up to place. T9 subassembly for our wheel. I'm going to left click to place twice. 
I'm going to go right back up to constrain. Go to insert, edge, to the same edge here, say apply, come back up here. You know I need to rotate this around. Let's come up here to free rotate. Click on our object, I'm going to rotate it around where it's facing the object. Constrain, insert, circle, insert, edge here, say apply. Now for our car, we can go back and notice that I can spin these now. Now they are separate from the overall larger sub-assemblies. Now earlier in the video I said we wanted to change what the front view was. The front view is the most descriptive view of the object. We're going to right click on this view and go to set current view as front. And let's do a top left. I'm going to right click, set current view as home, fit to view. There is my Automoblox car wheel sub-assembly. It's pretty cool to look at. This is a really, really good way to go about learning how to constrain objects within Autodesk Inventor and learning assembly principles. So I'm going to come up to save, and I'm going to just call this a final uh, T9 assembly. And there you've put, a, put together all the parts. I'm going to say OK. So this has been a video on the basically the global final assembly of all of your sub-assemblies for the T9 Automoblox car in Autodesk Inventor.